Ifani Willis said this. Recently, they tell me they don't like me to talk about race. Well, I'm gonna talk about it anyway. <laughs> Truth is, it's some challenges that come to being black. T.A. Mm. Willis. In Dalton Monday night, a chaotic village board meeting. It got underway an hour late because of a credible threat, according to police. Only a limited number of residents were let into the building, and they had to pass through a metal detector. Those who were not let in protested outside. A short time later, the meeting abruptly ended when four trustees walked out, uh -oh. called on the mayor to step down. We don't want you here. You are your administration. Y'all need to go. Mayor, you might as well step down, too. You know, because I'm tired of that, too. You know, this is a disgrace that you have done to this village. In battle. Yeah, Mayor, you might as well go ahead, dog. Mayor, you might as well step down, too. Go ahead and step down now, Mayor. Because uh, uh, I'm tired. I'm tired. Tired, Mayor. Tired, tired. You might as well go ahead and step down there, goddamn, Mayor. Because I'm tired. Tired, Mayor. Go ahead and step down. Because that, that's the way politics work. That's the way politics work. Mayor Tiffany Hanyard and a village trustee who's not named are at the center of an investigation by... This morning, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kirsten Delgado. Now, Hill was booked into the Orange County Jail on a handful of charges this morning. This is a look at her mugshot. We have... Gina on Hill. Uh, Ma'am, you're here today uh, because you were arrested off the, based on an indictment that was filed that was returned against you with seven counts. Count one, exploitation of an elderly person or disabled person um, of over $50,000, a breach of a power of attorney. Count two is uh, exploitation of an elderly or disabled person over $50,000 uh, in a position of trust or confidence. Count three, exploitation of an elderly or disabled person over $50,000 was intentional or negligent. Uh, count four, scheme to defraud of over $50,000. Count five, fraudulent use of a, of a person's identification over $100,000. Fraudulent use, uh, count six, fraudulent use of a personal identification as a parent, guardian, or custodian. And finally, count seven, mortgage fraud greater than $100,000. I have the... Uh, I have reviewed the, the information. Thank y'all for tuning in. This is perfect. Y'all joining in the Perfect Time and Podcast Studios. You are now watching the Perfect Time and Podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in. What a story we got for you today. You guys saw the intro. We are talking about city girl politics. I got three updates for you on three crazy stories. It's hard to keep track of what's going on with this, I don't know what you want to call it, type of politics ideology that's going on in our country today. But I, I don't know. I think somebody is asleep at the wheel. We got this same MO over and over again going all the way from Illinois to Georgia to Florida. Yes, indeedy, giving to the needy. Perfect time my podcast with the blast. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. We started with Fannie Willis updates. Fannie Willis has been told numerous times by the judge to not say certain things, to not do certain things. Fannie Willis has not listened. We're going to jump from Fannie Willis. I'm going to show you what she said. You saw in the intro. We're going to get more detail. We're going to jump from Fannie Willis. We're going to go to Florida where we have a council. Lots of questions today after District Attorney Fannie Willis said this. Recently, they tell me they don't like me to talk about race. Well, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Truth is, it's some challenges that come to being black. T.A. Mm. Willis making that comment despite Judge Scott McAfee's rebuke. Former President Donald Trump and co-defendants already appealing the decision to keep Willis on the case. I think Fannie Willis, unfortunately, is forgetting that this case is not about her. It's not even really about Donald Trump. It's about public faith in the justice system. And when a judge orders a prosecutor not to talk about race, not to throw around racial accusations, and then the DA does it anyway, then she's undermining public faith in the integrity of justice. She's actually demonstrating the kind of disregard for the courts that she was when she was testifying. And the job of the prosecutor ultimately is to make sure that the public has faith in the decisions of the courts and the justice system, and she's undermining that.
displaying the same disregard that she showed when she was testifying. City girl politics. Excellent job, brother. Excellent job. Let's keep going with the video. Love that commentary. And that's going to, I think, undermine her ability to carry out this trial. It's only going to help Donald Trump. Appeal. One of the questions for disqualification is whether forensic misconduct is a basis for disqualification and what exactly that entails. And there is argument based on Supreme Court precedent that even injecting the idea of race, especially in a case that has nothing to do with race, is grounds alone for that disqualification. So certainly it will be interesting if the appellate court takes up this case, what they make of that. But I think that alone could even form the basis for a disqualification. It seems like Fannie Willis is purposely trying to get herself disqualified from the case let's go to our next story man let's, let's, let's go to the uh let's go to florida where a councilwoman has been charged with stealing money from elderly women today regina hill was indicted by a grand jury this is a look at her indictment right now facing seven charges including that exploitation of the elderly. Now, here's what happened earlier this morning. Hill's attorney had made a deal with FTLE to allow Hill to turn herself in. She did so at their headquarters near downtown Orlando this morning. She was then brought here to the Orange County Jail, where she remains right now at noon. Now, this all stems from the case Channel 9 was the first to tell you about a week ago. Hill is accused of exploiting a 96-year-old constituent. The accusations say that Hill forged documents to not only take the woman's home, but to also become her guardian. That, then, the accusations say, allowed her to take $100,000 of the woman's money to spend on things like facelifts, dental surgery, even her insurance. Now, Hill has denied those... Commissioner Regina Hill is out of a job. Hill was at today's Orlando City Council meeting this morning, but did not return after they went on a break. News 6's Catherine Silver is taking a look at how we got to this point and what's next for those who Hill represented. Governor Ron DeSantis had this to say when he was asked. I think that there's a lot of problems uh, or a lot of concerning things with this with this conduct and this behavior, but that's for the courts to settle. Hill was arrested Thursday when the Florida Department of Law Enforcement announced they had been investigating her for more than a year. Mrs. Hill effectively betrayed the trust of her community by taking advantage of a 96-year-old elderly citizen, which is one of the most vulnerable in that community. Governor of Florida is three for three. He has removed two district attorneys, one white man, one black woman, and now he has been forced to remove Regina Hill, councilwoman, because she decided to rob and take advantage of the most vulnerable population which she was sworn to serve. Now, I'm going to go to my final and last story. That is the update from the city girl mayor. Now, you are not a queen. This is not a, a, a empire. You do not have rule over the people. And if the people do not believe in you and follow you, then this is what will be normal business. It will not be business. And you will be unable to conduct business without the will of the people. Let's go to the video, ladies and gentlemen. Village Hall in South Suburban Dalton, residents confronting embattled Mayor Tiffany Henyard. They say they want answers about Henyard, an unnamed village trustee, and a controversial trip to Las Vegas last May. NBC5's Regina Waldrop in Dalton tonight with the story. It was a packed village board meeting, but there were still people outside who could not get in. They were banging on doors, windows, chanting. And with that in mind, four trustees abruptly walked out, and this meeting was adjourned. I'm still speaking. You're out of order, clerk. You out of order. In Dalton Monday night, a chaotic village board meeting. It got underway an hour late because of a credible threat, according to police. Only a limited number of residents were let into the building, and they had to pass through a metal detector. Those who were not let in protested outside. A short time later, the meeting abruptly ended when four trustees walked out. The uh, Open Meetings Act requires that the uh, that we have enough space for everybody to get in. Uh, because of that, I feel we have a lot of outrage going on out there, and we want to be able to provide the space to people that they are looking for. This is the residents' home, and anytime you can't come in, it's a problem. During public comment, a number of residents outraged because of the alleged misuse of village funds, lawsuits, and other issues called on the mayor to step down. 
the center of an investigation by the Illinois Department of Human Rights. The probe is focused on what allegedly happened on an economic development trip to Las Vegas last May. Henyard's former assistant, who filed this complaint, claims she was sexually assaulted by an unnamed Dalton trustee on that trip. She claims she was then later fired from her job. In a statement, the village told NBC5 it conducted a thorough investigation into the allegations led by an independent third-party company. The statement goes on to say this is nothing more than a disgruntled village employee. But when you spend the township's money, $100,000 on one trip, another $100,000 on a bulletproof vehicle, another $20,000 on another trip, that takes directly from the town's ability to do its job, like investigate what happened to this woman here. It's very sad to see and hear that but there will be downstream effects from a lack of leadership. I just want to bring you guys this city girl politics. Again, shout out to Pink Book Lessons. Shout out to all the work she's done. Y'all go subscribe, watch the whole playlist. My name is Perfect of the Perfect Time Podcast. Let me know in the comments what you think about this city girl politics. We got it spreading. I think it's contagious. I think we got to put it out. We got to put this fire out now. And, and what I would ask of you is you've seen similar things. Now, this case has come out of New York. It's a similar trend out of the office out of New York. It's a similar trend out of the office out of Atlanta. I believe we have to nip this in the bud. But let me know in the comments what you think. Is this city girl politics pervasive? What should we do about it? Is it real? Is it not? Have you been keeping up with these stories? Uh, do you believe Ron DeSantis have overstepped his boundaries? Do you believe the leadership in Illinois and Georgia have not done enough? Should the governors in Illinois and Georgia step up in the same way Ron DeSantis have and the governor of New York step up in the same way that Ron DeSantis have to curtail these creative lawsuits in these, uh, what's a better term than creative lawsuits, but uh, the lack of couth character and decorum being shown by these unprofessional people who currently sit in these seats to where justice is not being given to the people that they prosecute. It's impossible for you to get justice when these are the individuals that we're talking about whose job has been tasked to, to administer justice. Let me know in the comments. My name is Perfect Person on Podcast with the Blast. I'm out.